Welcome back, you degenerates, to the number one fantasy football podcast in the world. I'm your host, Mike, with my biggest, biggest rival in the whole world, Billy himself. He unfortunately beat me this week in fantasy football for the second time in his whole career. Back to back, the dynasty is over against me. I'm, I'm now 0-2 and two against them yep. in the last two years. Love it's time it. to have a kid, so I have some leverage in the future. What what kind of leverage are you going to need? You're going to so trade so my your baby be, for a running back? No, because my luck is done, you know? So, like, if I spawn, if I make another one, their luck is full, so. Oh, so you got to pass the luck over? Because fantasy no, the, football it, is 100% no, you, skill, I thought. It is, but I'm done with I'm, my skills are over with. Oh, but your but your luck is still still beaten. It's ball. My heart is beaten. Yeah, Barely. hardly. Hardly. This is week seven. Thanks to Billy for doing all the notes for me this week. He's the best man in the world. We're gonna start us off with the injuries. There's a ton of them. A lot of bangs. A lot of boos. Um, you want to take over the injuries? Yeah, or? just it's just a few big names I wrote down. There's like a lot of people who are banged up, but. There's not enough news on him yet. The big ones, Nick Chubb, officially out for Thursday, running scoop up the D- Ernest, Dernest, however you call it. Ernest uh, Johnson. Johnson. He's going to be the starting running back for the Browns. Christian McCaffrey is this dropped after we recorded last week. He is officially back on the injured reserve list, out three more weeks. You know, I, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but Chuba, Hub, Chuba Hubbard seems like he was one of the steals of the draft at this point. Whether he produces at the same level or not, you know, you get a starting running back in the 15th round. For Absolutely. now, it is six, seven weeks. Um, Antonio Gibson left the game last week with a shit with his uh, shin injury that's been nagging him. He had an MRI today. There's no news on it yet, so just keep an eye out for that. And Dawson Knox, broken hand. I'm not clicking the keyboard, Mike. It's not me. Uh, Dawson Knox, broken hand. It is questionable if he's going to play there on bye this week. So you never know if he's going to be able to play. It's a it's a bone in his hand. It's not his whole hand is broken. So that's all, all I've hand. got for injuries right now. What about all you got? Baker Mayfield. <clears throat> I mean, he play. He dislocated his shoulder. Two weeks ago, played the next week, and they dislocated the same shoulder. So, I'm assuming it, it doesn't really take take two shoulders to hand the ball off 35 times a game. He's a bitch, anyway. Yeah, it's just non throwing arm. So, yeah, I don't even know why we're even talking about it. You only need one hand in the world, whatever your dominant is. That's all I gotta say. That's a fact. Let's start us off. We already went through wave wires with you guys. If you haven't seen the video already, it's on YouTube. Check it out. I do a weekly. Billy also does an article every week for you guys. That goes in depth. My videos are a really quick thing, so check them out. Starting, yes, us, off is, starting us off is going to be a Thursday night game. The B&B, Broncos versus Browns. Uh, like you said before, Maker Mayfield may or may not play. It kind of hurts that this is going to be a, a, a Thursday night game. So he's on short rest. Uh, Nick Chubb's out. Uh, Henry uh, Hunt is out, so yes, pick up Ernest Johnson this week. He is going to be the number one wave wire pickup in your league. I think the biggest discussion now is is now is Drew is Drew, is it Drew Lott's time? What do you think, Billy? Gosh, dude, I don't know. it's hard to tell. They both stink. They're both very bad. Um, they're not a good football team with either one of them. You might as well give the young kid a chance. I'm a I'm a Teddy Two Glove guy personally. Yeah, you make fun of me all the time for flipping back and forth. I don't flip back and forth. I think Teddy Bridgewater deserves a starting role. I just don't think that the play calling is good for the Broncos. I don't think that the O line is particularly good for the Broncos, which you know makes him look bad. But if if you're if you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do with Drew Locke for the future. You never should have started Teddy Two Gloves to begin with. That's that, that's all I got to say about it. That's exactly what I feel. I felt like it was a big mistake uh, doing Bridgewater. You know what? If you're going to go in this year you and you thought you were going to win the championship, okay, 
play play bridge play Bridgewater, but Drew Lock was, you know, let let's play him and let's see him how he how he does for the whole year. Guess what? If you if he doesn't do good, you're gonna have a good draft pick at the end of the year anyway. Now you're talking about trading your whole team. I mean, that's what the news is, and uh, your coach is saying it's not gonna happen. But mm. yeah, I mean, they could have. They could have started Drew Locke to start the season. If he did bad, then they could have played Teddy. Yeah. Now it's the other way around. You signed Teddy to a contract. Him thinking he's the starter, if you pull him, then why'd you sign him to begin with? Exactly. I don't think, I think Drew Locke, he's going to help the, the passes downfield, obviously with that cannon of an arm. Um, he's best friends with Font, so I think Font's going to continue to grow. Um, but Font is already Font is probably the best player on the team. So, especially yeah. fantasy wise, huge game last week, twenty seven points or something like that. Um, continue to grow. He's just gonna get better as it goes. Yeah, yeah we don't. True Lock's not starting. It's Teddy Bridgewater. This yeah, week. it's still Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, we're just like to the it's point where Teddy's been bad enough where you can bring the question up. Um. I don't have. I don't really know what to say about OBJ. It's kind of just you don't play him. He's getting traded. I mean, I think the only reason why you should play him on your team is if you have a bye week or he has just a great matchup. I don't think Broncos is a great matchup, so I would not play OBJ this week. Um, and that's about it. Do you have yeah. anything else to say about this game? No, not really. Um, Cleveland's been a top ten passing defense. But they give up a lot of short yardage passes, so their fantasy points to wide receivers stat is a little inflated. But um, they don't really give up a lot of touchdowns to, to the receivers; it's more towards the running game. So I do think that there's value in Font this week. He could have another monster week just because of the short pa- short passes he does receive. Besides that, I got nothing on this game. Very nice. That's up. Bengals versus Ravens. We have the huge couple pass games by not only the best running back at QB, but what else are we going to expect from this game? You expect the big game from uh, from Bateman. And now that is second game back. Yeah, I, I think that Bateman got worked into the offense a little bit, just trying to get him involved. But I do expect him to take a step forward in the next few weeks. Maybe it's not this one. Bengals been pretty good on D. But um, the bigger question is which washed-up running back is going to score a touchdown this week? <laughs> My bet it's going to be Freeman because he's the best one over there. They, I mean, they have three <laughs> former Pro Bowl running backs that are all over the age of 30. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Absolutely. I think Bateman is just going to continue to get better. Like I said earlier in my video, that he's going to take time to get into, you know, football shape. You could be running on the field. doesn't mean anything. He's going to have to play to actually get into that shape. He's just going to get better. He had four targets. I mean, four catches last week, but it didn't translate in yards because he didn't break one off. He didn't, he didn't have a touchdown or nothing like that. So I, I expect him to be a lot better. Yeah, it's going to take some time for him to get a – get involved into the offense because they've, they've now gone five weeks without him. And, you know, they still have to figure out a way, the right ways to use them and what situations. So it's going to take some time. But if you're a Rashad Bateman believer, keep believing because he's going to have a breakout game. I just don't think it's this week. Yeah, but they're also a run-first offense. How much, of course. How much stock are you going to be putting into the third option? Like, when is he going to become playable? But when it, how, for how long is he going to be the third option? I mean, Marquise Brown is the most inconsistent player to ever play football. One week he'll catch it. three touchdowns, next week he'll drop three touchdowns. Like, and you're you're gonna think that eventually someone's gonna cover the only good player on the team, and that's that's uh, the best tight end, Billy would say. Uh, I hate that guy. ever. I hate that guy so much. I see a little thing you had about Big Joe Mixon over here. Yeah, I mean, you're... it could be a Big Joe Mixon week. I, you know, I'm a Joe Mixon hater, but um, the Ravens are averaging six receptions per game to the running back. Uh, Joe Mixon is finally being used in the passing game this year. 
Uh, he had a nice little catch and run for a touchdown last week. Uh, you know, Ravens are also they're just they the Ravens defense looked good last week, but I also believe that the Chargers came out real flat. So I mm-hmm. think it's people they, that they're actually better than they are. Um, the stats back it up. Ravens given up an average of 277 passing yards per game, which is 25th in the NFL, and they've been giving up a lot of rushing yards as well. I do think it's a big Joe Mixon week. I agree, 100%. Nits up. Chiefs versus Titans. Take the over. Take the over. <laughs> I think that, believe it or not, I have I have Henry as a dud this week. Oh, you're a psychopath. I think that there's just nothing else you have to to stop on this offense than Henry. Stop Henry, oh. you win. You're can on you, Can you do it? I don't know. You already said Kansas City is going to give up 133 yards per game on the ground. That's, I don't that's know. an average. It's an average. <laughs> the the people the whose name's not Derrick Henry. Exactly. Like the only defense worse than them is the Chargers stopping the run. You said they're going to be a dud. Holy I fuck. think he's going to be a dud. So that means I'm going to give him like 80 yards. Yikes. 80 yards and three touchdowns is still uh, no, still I mean, a stud. I guess so. But um, A.J. Brown had zero catches going into the fourth quarter. It doesn't look good. Never we, We're all down on A.J. Brown. Um, even though he had seven catches for 91 yards after the fourth quarter, did nothing. Useless. Useless. I mean, wasn't he one of your sits of the week? Yeah. yeah it didn't work out so well. It looked great. He was sick. They said he had a stomach virus, this and that. He was in and out of the locker room all night. And then in the fourth quarter, he decided, hey, I'm healthy enough that I can catch seven seven passes for 90, 91 yards in under 10 minutes. Um, they it's, leaned on him. It's not well, even true. He caught two passes in the third quarter, so whoever made yeah. that stat was wrong. That's literally from ESPN. <laughs> literally I'm from ESPN. That's, ESPN. I watched the entire game. So did I. I was, I was sleeping. But that's right. a copyright issue, so... Yeah, don't thanks, play whoever, uh, whoever's playing the copyrights. Um, I think it's another w- big game by Williams this week at the running back position. I think that he's going to have a, a ton of catches out of the backfield. Um, I think that's his main play. I don't think he's going to be a, a, a main runner, even though he is the top running back on that team right now with um, Clyde Edward being hurt. I think he's going to be his, his most of his fantasy points is going to come from catching for, out of the backfield. And not being a runner. No, I I, I don't disagree. Um, I think that Patrick Mahomes could possibly break a passing record this week, with how banged up the Titans' secondary is. They're going to be resorting to using practice squad corners this week. Um, every other play, when you watch the Monday night game, there was another corner getting hurt. They were down to three of them, and none of them were starters. So. Yeah, they lost their uh, top draft pick, which is ACL. If, if you were going to start Miko Hardman one week, it could be this week. He had a good week last week as well. Yeah. I agree. Next up, Falcons versus Dolphins. Kyle Pitts, baby, fresh off the bye. Going dolphin fishing. Dolphin fishing for fishing. dolphins. Doubtful. He's going to get stopped. He's going to get stopped. Wow. Dolphins coming off the worst loss in franchise history. <laughs> in franchise history. In franchise history. They've never wow. lost a game that was so meaningless in their life to a team that's been so bad historically. Ever. Ever. And Tula looked great, Dolphins. though. Tula looked real good. He lost the game. He wasn't good. He still was looked good. No. Jalen Waddle made him look good. Let's get Jalen Waddle and Gasecki made him look good. And by the way, Gasecki is a bitch. He's he's the LeBron of the NFL. Every time he caught the ball, got up, complained about a penalty. Every single time. Don't like him. You think this is a Miles Gaston's bounce back week? No. I I I think I wrote that I, I think he's dust. I think he's not very good. He can't can't keep the starting role. 
you know, once we think that he has a good week, you're like, oh, you know, they're going to use him more, and then yeah. he just stinks it up. If he you just didn't it already trade him, you should have did it after the 30-point game. We told you that was the best he's going to get, and uh, it's only going to get worse from here. I think we had a stat. He hasn't had more than six carries in four games, three games. It's crazy. It's insane. It's wild. Hasn't since week three. Oh, she's horrible. That's just god awful. Yep. Um, it could be a monster week for both Kyle Pitts and for Calvin Ridley if Matt Ryan decides he's going to show up and remember how to play football. Uh, Miami's giving up the fourth most passing yards in the NFL, so a lot of a lot of yards to be uh to be eaten up by Kyle Pitts to bounce week, back into that top five. Last week they had four DBs out. Um, just read into the the yeah. end of the week on the injuries and see if they're out again. If they're out again, expect a huge day by the Falcons. Falcons might score forty. Yeah, but even when like Xavier Howard was in, they were still giving up monster yeah. yardage. I mean, a yeah. part of it is because they played Tom Brady and he threw for like four hundred yards, but regardless, they've been giving up a lot of yards through the air. Yeah. Next up, Jets versus Patriots, round two, rookie versus rookie, Matt Jones versus Wilson. We got to see if Wilson has a comeback game because if anything, he needs it now, especially after the bye week. If you don't win this game, if you don't play good, it's not going to look good for you after a bye week. Um, so it would be interesting to slam those players. Maybe we're going to Corey Davis this week. I don't yep. know. I mean, a little bit like a little bit of a hunch. Buys. Yep. Especially after a buy, you're going to you're going to play Corey Davis. You'll probably have to play Jameson Crowder. Um, maybe Michael Carter coming on strong before the bye. Maybe he continues it up. Uh, it's a tough defense. It's a very tough defense. So they're always good. They already played once too. Corey Davis yeah. catches for uh, eight yards last. Yeah, time. well, that's <laughs> we're growing. the The Jets are a growing franchise. You know, trying to get a that. trying to get Corey Davis to ball more. That's how you win games. You know, anytime they've been competitive in a game, it's because Corey Davis is playing playing well. Mm-hmm. So. Is it finally our guy, Stevenson's? I hope so. Uh, Damian Willis, Damian Harris, I'm sorry, was limping off the field in the fourth quarter, limped back on the field to not get a touchdown, but they limped back off. Um, if he if he is hurt in any capacity, Ramondre Stevenson could be a big play this week. The Jets are giving up the second most fantasy points to running backs this season, giving up the second most yards to uh to running backs this season, it could be a big week. And he was out, he was out in um in passing downs as well. Yeah, two, last week three, he had three, three catches. catches. You know yeah. he's good. He was on the field thirty percent, thirty three percent exactly on the field thirty three percent. That makes me smile. You know, yeah, it makes it's getting smile. bigger. And guess what? <laughs> White's not there, so someone's yeah. got to get a someone's got it on that field. Yeah, I I do think that this is gonna be a very low scoring game as it usually is against these two teams. They don't really put up a lot of points. Um, that's about all I have. I think Ramondre Stevenson is a, is a play if Damon Harris is banged up, and I think that you don't really have a choice. You probably have to play Corey Davis with all these bye weeks. We didn't yep. go over who's who's on bye real quick. Steelers, Bills, Cowboys, Jaguars, Chargers, Vikings. A lot of wide receivers that, that are in your starting lineup usually will not be. Um, a lot of quarterbacks, too. Couple of the big quarterback names as well. A lot of the top top dogs are out. You know who's not a top dog though? Before we get into the next game, Kyle Pitts. No, Trevor Lawrence. That's <laughs> trash. That's not the next yeah. game though. That's <laughs> um, last week. Medium rare. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> medium rare. Thanks. Next stop, my horrible ran New York Giants against the Panthers. CMC is not back. He's on IR. He's going to be three more games, unfortunately. Chubba is looking good last two weeks. Got to love it. The Giants just got off all over the place. I don't care. Don't compare last season to this season's defense. Um, They're banged up, man. They're so hurt. There's, There's no soul. There's no soul. You know, 
I can't even explain to you when there's no soul. Yeah, no, it's not like part. when you like like when you make me wings, Billy, and you don't <laughs> tell me that you really put the ramen packets in there, and I like it, and you say I'm wrong, but I I taste it. That's how I feel when you uh, when the Giants are this bad. No soul. No soul. No soul. Um, we make Sam Darnold three weeks in a row. Well, two weeks in a row, he's been terrible. That's right. He's gonna have a bounce back game against the Giants. So I'm not really too worried. <laughs> the Giants, Anybody can go off against the Giants. Uh, the Giants actually held the Rams in the first basically half. Pretty yeah, decent. They had a lead. Pretty decent, but you got to do it consistently. And guess what? There's four quarters, so that means there's four quarters. Donalds are gonna beat our ass next week. All right. <laughs> um, Robbie Anderson finally got a bunch of targets. Only two catches. He's just not producing. I, I didn't watch a lot of the game. I was with you guys. We didn't really watch any of the Panthers game. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'll have to go back and check to see what those targets actually look like. But uh, regardless, two two catches, not great, Robbie Anderson. You're droppable at this point. Um, I figured need, out why he's bad this year. We we went over it because Adam Ga- cause, uh, he reminds uh, out, Sam Darnold about Adam Gase. The real reason. Oh, no, reason. I think it's because last year Teddy Che checked down, threw it to him in the five yard routes a lot, and this year it's not Sam Donald's thing. No, the real reason is because he already got paid. You mm. pay him too much, you become a lazy bum, and guess what? All he cares about is money. I'll tell you right now. Interesting. 100%. Booker looked pretty decent. Uh, yeah, he had a ton of catches. I don't know the exact number, but just watching the game over, I saw a ton of catches. Um, and hopefully the Giants continue that, especially if you're a Booker owner, because I don't know when Barkley is coming back. Not for a while. Yeah, definitely not for at least two more weeks. I don't think. Get a bunch of catches. I'm pretty sure. Every time I looked, catch. Booker had four catches for 28 yards. That's pretty decent. Pretty yeah, decent. Not bad. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's my sit of the week this week against the Panthers. Defense. Oh, yeah. It's a horrible, horrible yeah. defense to go against. Anyway, next up, we have the loser Washington football team against the Packers. Yep. And Tony Gibson probably hurt and probably not playing. The shin injury got worse. And was knocked out of the game. If you don't already owe uh, Matistic, I can't say his name. JD, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, it's a, He's a must pick up. It's wild that he's only 44% owned. Yes. It really is. He's a flex play every week. Just because it, of his pass catching ability. What's even, it's, what's even more shocking is how bad this Washington defense is. Being this bad puts JD in a better opportunity because they're going to be passing all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, he's been averaging five, five and a half targets a game. And like, how is he not owned? Especially how, how, uh, how rare to have a, a decent running back is this year. You know, especially in our league, it's damn near impossible. Mm -hmm. I'll be quiet, ghost. I don't want to hear you talking. Muted. Um, last week we told you Ricky Steele's Jones. Now look at you. You guys are praying begging, pleading to try to get him on the waiver wire, through a trade, whatever you have to do. Listen, you got to be a week early. We tell you every year, tell you every week. If you talk to us, we'll tell you every day. You have to be a week early, otherwise you're a week late. And you should have picked him up. You want to know why? Thomas was hurt. Yeah, Thomas was hurt, and tight end's a vital part of that offense. They They shown it year after year, you know? And Ricky Seals Jones, like some of you might not remember, but in he show he showed that he can play at a high level when he was he's on the He's more Cardinals. of a wide receiver in a tight end's yeah. body. He's he's which a skinny is, tight end. Which is very similar to Logan Thomas. He's not an overly yes. strong tight end. He's more athletic. So like it's a great fit. So if you picked him up, he's still only forty five percent owned, which is crazy. But Logan what? Thomas is still a hundred percent owned. Guess what? You're going to go into this wave wire because you're a week late. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be 12 
wave wire pickups for him. And you're not going to get your guy, especially if you don't have the top. And do you really want to waste your first, if you're number one, do you really want to waste your wave wire on a tight end unless you're desperate for it? You don't want to do it. Guess what? Running backs, then maybe tight ends, maybe. Nah, I, for me, I like if we're just going to talk about that for a second, how how the waiver wire works. I I wait till everybody's transactions are done because half the time, like people who are streaming tight ends, they'll drop the tight end they streamed for the the hot the hot running back of the week, and that's who I picked up. Yeah, I always I just wait unless I'm desperate. Like I had to pick up Williams uh, when Clyde got hurt. I had to, no choice. And that's what I wait. I wait. I only make, you know, every wave wire, I wait till after it's done and I pick it up. Unless I'm 100% know it's going to be a stud. Real quick, shout out to Joe Green for telling me Devontae Adams was going to go off last week. Didn't happen. <laughs> I, I agreed, but it just it just didn't work out the way we wanted it to for DFS. But this week is a nice get-right game. It's a nice 40-point game for Devontae Adams coming in. With the with the Washington secondary, that's absolute dog shit. Love hearing that. Considering I'm playing Devontae Adams this week. Good. Fuck <laughs> you. You. This is what you deserve. You deserve it. <laughs> Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon basically splitting catches, fifty percent, thirteen to eleven carries. Um, I see this going forward. I think they want to have two healthy bats going through the whole season. I don't see why they're changing this. So if you're Aaron Jones or AJ Dillon owner, I mean, especially if you're AJ Dillon owner, hold on to him. But if you're Aaron Jones, if he has a big week, maybe you want to trade him off. I'm not sure yet. I think you could sell him high and maybe get something out of it and use his name. I mean, Aaron Jones still getting all the passing work. Besides that one week, that was an outlier. Um, he's still he's four catches on four targets, 34 yards and a touchdown. So. Mm-hmm. He's still getting all the passing down work, so I wouldn't be too worried. But you're not you're not getting the value that you drafted him at for sure. Definitely not first round. Or second round. Nope. I think that's all we have about the Packers. Let's start off with the next game, Eagles versus Raiders. The Raiders. The Raiders. All right. I'm not gonna lie. I would have bet against the Raiders last week. But Billy. Mm-hmm was huge on the Raiders and everything they were talking about. Um, it's just, it's the simple theory. We do it every year, and then for some reason, I see you on Sunday, you're like, no, that does, that theory never works. I'm like, it works every every single time. Every I single time, so. coach gets fired, coach quits, whatever happens, you bet that team, they play with the new energy, and they win the game. Joe Green over here, avid Raiders fan, didn't want to listen to me. I had to get his dad to bet on the game. <laughs> <laughs> More of a degenerate than Joe is. I looked, at, I looked up the stat when you said the fire thing, and that's actually only the second time in eight tries the Raiders have won <laughs> after firing their head coach. I'm just talking in, in want, recent history. Yeah, that I is the recent history. No, <laughs> well, I'm not talking about just the Raiders. About, the Raiders have had nine everybody. coaches. He's talking about the NFL as a community. The NFL. Yeah, yeah, he's he's about coaches. It. Yeah. Also, he still can't fathom the idea why he only won ninety and dollars and not a hundred. And I keep trying to explain to him the odds, but it thought whatever. Well, uh, let's t- give him give him the link to uh to the uh, Ben Diagonal when we teach Jared how to gamble, and then yeah, watch <laughs> that'll that'll help him out. I think he'll love it actually. I'll text it over to him tonight. Like, hey, this is what juice means. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your OJ. Uh, they finally used their weapons right. Henry Ruggs went deep. Renfro only on third downs. Waller not 50 times a game. They look good. They did look good. That's what happens when you have a coach. Yeah. He's real Italian. right? He's Joe? a special. He's a special coach. <laughs> like, like, Joe, like, Joe, who's the new coach? I don't know. He's Italian. They just kept saying it all day. Well, you heard his name, and you're like, oh, shit, he's real Italian. Yeah, he's real Italian. <laughs> Eagles are a disaster, but yeah. Hertz did have a big game. Hertz is week. gone, baby. I'm not not Hertz. Hertz. Oh, Hertz. Sorry. Say that wrong. Hertz. Hertz is gone. So now there's only one tight end. Um, what's his name? Should be off of COVID. 
this week, hopefully. They pray. Yeah. Um, that rival series look got awful. I don't know why you waste oh. the first round pick on Reader, but hopefully that's just... the uh, offensive coordinator figured out Miles Sanders running the ball works. Look at that! He ran him like four times for fifty yards. Like, eh, I, you did, he, oh. he only did that because you didn't start him last week. So you're gonna start him this week, and he's not gonna run the ball. Sounds all right. It was like Mo Watts telling me that Miles Sanders is the top five running back, but they don't ever use him. I'm like, no, the stats don't back that up. Like, his numbers are inflated. Like, if you only run it a couple times and you do well during those couple times, then don't run for those one-yard one gains like most running backs do. Yeah, your, your, um, your, your yard per attempt is going to be like 6.5 mm-hmm. all year long. Like if yep. you run the ball twenty five times, you're not that you're not gonna be that efficient unless your name is Derrick Henry. Who is gonna do bad this week? Yeah, okay. I don't really have anything to say about this game. No, this game stinks. Like it's now that the Raiders game. won that game last week, now I don't know what they're going to be. I'm hoping Mariota plays to be honest. That's the only thing I want. That's see. never that's never gonna happen. We just like that for own, our own entertainment. <laughs> Lions versus Rams. I think this is going to be an interesting game. It is. Golf is going against his old team on the Rams. Stafford going against the Lions. Double revenge game. Yeah. Um, the spread is what, like 15 and a half? Is it? Absurd. There's a I'm lot take, of lot of big numbers. I'm taking Lions. Yeah, you have to. Like, yeah. I took the, the card. I took the Texans against the Cardinals. Like my plus 18. Like, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, Cooper Cup, best uh, fantasy player, absolutely, hundred yeah. uh, percent. He might be one of the best wide receivers in the league right now. He is the he's the best. He yeah. had a couple. He had a good year a couple years ago too. Um, Cooper Cup guy, love it. I'm not gonna say the words, but you know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh. The Lions, worst team against the running backs. Massive week for Henderson. Yeah. Maybe. Question mark. Definitely. Maybe Sony Michelle. Question mark. Um, I can Sony's see... questionable for the game. How is it? Yeah. I could see them going up so much that they have to force the run. So not the opposite way where they should run the ball to play off, play off their pass. But I think they're going to be up so much that they're going to have to run the ball. I think that Matthew Stafford is just going to continue to just throw bombs this week against the Lions. That's why, like, Daryl Henderson in reality should be one of the star- my starts of the week, but it's just like how bad does, does Matthew Stafford really just want to stick it to the Lions to show that he can actually be a, a, a winning fo- uh, quarterback? So, it's a Jackson week. It was supposed <laughs> to be a Jackson week last week. It, oh my god, Deshaun Jackson actually murders the Giants. Didn't even get one target. It was embarrassing. That was the worst take I've ever heard of. Him. No, he did get. He did get. He got one catch for six yards. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, I, he killed the Giants. He, right? He does kill the Giants. Uh, the Lions, both running backs, still splitting carries, like always. Yeah, there's nothing new there. How, how did nothing. it feel to sit Hawkinson for Dan Arnold last week? I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it because you sat. A top five tight end for a hunch on a nine thirty game in London. You want me to go over this? Yeah, I do. For everybody. Just for that guy. It made no sense. It made no sense to me. Dar whatever this fucking name is, Arnold was having a good week last week. Okay. He had eight targets, six catches for I don't know, sixty yards, whatever, something like that. Then I had Hawkinson hurt, banged up, going against one of the top five defenses against tight ends, the Bengals. Been shutting every tight end down. Um, it's horrible. Arnold going against the Jazz, going against who are they going against? The Dolphins. The Dolphins, one of the worst against the tight ends. They're not. They're top 15 team against tight ends. Yeah, but at the time it was even worse. It's the Dolphins. It's, it is the Dolphins. All right. 
So my thinking is, if I I could get easy points, maybe I all I wanted was like twelve points, and yeah. I thought Hawkinson was gonna get like eight or six, and I was worried. So I was like, let me do a smart play, let me put him in, and guess what? He lost me the game. You don't want to hear who the Bengals have played? Maybe why that stat's ridiculous. I've already looked it all. Up. Yeah, it's horrible. Vikings. They've played the Steelers. They've played. They've played the Jaguars. Dan Arnold, you know, got shut down. Let me tell you. No, well, he wasn't on the team in the beginning. I'm just, just throwing it out there. Whoever was the tight end, you know, they played the Bears. Who I don't think they've thrown one pass to the tight end this year. Um, Big Clement. Cole, Cole Clement, you know, Joe's uh, sleeper of the year. Cole Clement. <laughs> you fucked me on that, Joe. I'll have you know, he's made me start 0-2 in one league because of that. Look at him going for that one. It was a bad play. Play your fucking starters, you bums. Yep. Uh, I have nothing more to say about this Lions Rams game. You just drained all my energy. Sorry Bears there, versus Bucks. Tom Brady going against the Bears. Um... This is going to be awful for the Bears because they're a run-heavy team. Bucks are one of the best run defenses. So, in theory, we're going to have to expect more passing by fields in this game. It's going to have to happen. Could this finally be the Allen Robinson breakout game? Uh, not a breakout game, but he had uh, his best week with fields last week. So, going into this week, I'm hoping for 12 points. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, I... I yeah. honestly pray. I think it's going to be 12 points. Um, clip that, and then we'll save that for later, because I do <laughs> think that it's, like, right about there. Like, it's like, I think it would be a Mooney day regardless, because he prefers Mooney over Alex let's see what's Let's see what Sleeper is projecting. Nine, I think it was. Um, I I agree, though. You can't run on the box. You have to throw the ball. It's 10.29 is projected. Oh, so is, is your start of the week? Start of the week, baby. <laughs> if there was a week to play Allen Robinson, this would be the week. Yeah, I mean, we've said that multiple times now, and it just it hasn't happened. No, this would legit be the week, because they're not going to be able to run the ball. Yeah, well, they, can, they may, may not be able to throw the ball either. Matt Nagy. Hello. I just, I don't know. Lenny's the only... Lenny, he he could struggle against this game. I think Lenny is now the definitely 100% RB1, though. I don't even think Bernard yeah. is uh, getting any catches. Barely seen anything. Uh, he had his best week last week with two touchdowns. Joe Green would know that. He had a huge bet on uh, Lenny having two touchdowns. Well, uh, I'm still waiting for my lunch. Um, yeah. But... The Bears are good against the D, or against the run. So yeah, the, I don't the know. stats deceive them. You know they let up a big game, one big game, and then the rest have just been kind of average. So you know, they look better. They they controlled the run against the Packers even when they were down big. So also Aaron Rodgers owns them apparently. So so is this a Mike Will? Uh, not Mike Will. Mike Evans week? Yes or no? I don't. I don't know, man. It's. It's damn like every time it's damn near impossible to know who's going to get the ball for the box. Right. All three wide receivers have forty plus targets. All of them have double digit games, two double digit games of targets. Every week it changes. It's impossible to know, and it's not like okay, it's one one one. It's like sometimes it's back to back. Sometimes they do bad three weeks. It's it's absurd. Who? What do you think? It's I, I think it's brown, has to It's be. always a brown week. I mean, it's always a brown week just because Tom Brady loves them. They, they're roommates. They they're live brothers. together. That's what he said. We're brothers. Oh, boy. Rest in peace, Chris Godwin, you know? I want to see how his kids come out soon. Ew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounded weird. Don't yeah, put did. that. That's why I said ew. <laughs> 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 So weird. Can't even say what I was going to say. I don't know. Let's stop. Texans versus Cardinals. This game. Ertz finally going to go to the Cardinals. 
most of your apps were uh, playing, saying that you didn't play last week. Thank you. Should have kept it that way. Thank God I got those points back, Joe. Me and you would have had a real problem. I told you, the CEO of fucking Sleeper right there on the left, Mike, is colluding with the app. Yeah. Mike had to send out a tweet because too many people were tweeting at him. Sleeper uh, had to put out a tweet saying, well, we're working real hard on it, but wait till after the game. Excuse me, I don't, yeah, I don't have time to wait till after the game. Get it done now. I need to know how many points I'm projecting to win by or lose by. Me and Mike were in a real tight battle, and I had Zach Ertz play on Thursday night. Then Sunday afternoon comes, and Zach Ertz has zero points. I won winning by six. It was a very close matchup. Uh, I'm not expecting anything from Zach Ertz. This is probably the worst team he could probably get drafted, uh, traded to. I don't see a big upside for him. What? They I, were using Max Williams five, six, five, six t- targets a game. Zach Ertz I just, is better. I agree, but I just there's too many hands to feed. What I mean. One week is going to be more. Nets is going to be Edmund. Nets is going to be Green. The Nets is going to be Kirk. Nets is. I don't. I, s- I disagree. Um, I think they try to. He's going to be limited in this one for sure because he doesn't know the offense very well. But I yeah. do think they try to work him in early and then you know let him study the playbook in the second half because they're going to be winning. They're going to be winning by a decent margin. Hopefully less than eighteen, but um. Texans currently giving up second most points, fantasy points to the tight end. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't start him. I'm going to because I really don't have another choice. And I'm playing Jared, whose team is absolute dog shit, so it's fine. But um, I just think it's going to be hard to learn this offense, this RPO offense. It's just a lot of moving parts. I think it's going to be difficult for him. I say so. He's a what eight, nine year vet now, playing on a the same, basically the same offense. They just switched coaches, so now you want them to learn something new? Yeah, why not? Hmm. He's a smart guy. You, Mark Ingram. You wrote, I see that you most mediocre RB around. Yeah, he's the most mediocre running back right now. Is he going to um, become the new Frank Gore? Yeah, that's yeah. a perfect comparison. Oh, my God. Because he used to be very fantasy relevant. And then now he's just going to be sticking around the league for the next eight to ten years. <laughs> Cock blocking every Between good him back. and, like, I feel like James Conner is going to be that guy one day. Yeah. You know? James just, Conner feels like that guy already. He's, like, three years into the league. Yeah. <laughs> In his prime, <laughs> he's like, a cock blocker. But you feel like he's been in the league for a decade. Yeah, um, you really do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's bye week hell. You might need a running back, and uh, you're going to see some Mark Ingram in people's lineups. So it's not going to be great. Um, yeah. I mean, at least he gets carries, so. Yeah, he does get carries. So. I'm like, just hope he gets a running back. So, I mean, yeah. just hope he gets a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, outside of this game, I, I mean, outside of that, like, everything else is in play for the Cardinals. Yeah. Like, the, you're... The, if you have to play James Conner, you're going to have to just because of the bye weeks, and you hope he falls into the end zone. Chase Edmonds has been a weekly starter every every week at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you playing Brandon Cooks in this one? Yeah. Yeah. I Excited? think Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. Cardinals defense. Cardinals defense been pretty good. Yeah. That's all right. I, I don't think they're great. I think they're good. I don't think they're great. I think they're better against the. Their run, and on third down, passing down. So I think Cooks is still going to get some plays. Next up, Colts versus 49ers. This is the of... worst Sunday night game ever. Why do you have return of Jimmy G? He's coming back this week. Oh, sure. Is he? He's supposed to play? Yeah, he's supposed to be the starter. Oh, shit. Yeah, you guys are welcome for, for doing all the research for this show. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, you did do all the research for this show. Trey Lance was only projected three points. I thought it was because he was hurt, but that makes more sense. Well, Jimmy G's coming off the injury. So now we're Debo's about to have a huge week. He could. Yeah. Very well could. Colts secondary is absolute trash. 255 um, ga- uh, yards per game. Yeah, and that's like... It's not even as... It's worse than that sounds. Like That's like... 
I, I believe it's ranked twentieth in the NFL, but they're really one of the worst secondaries. It's just it's probably just so say what you're gonna say. Oh, I'm just saying it's because they slow the slow the game down. Indy does by running the ball so many times. That's what I was exactly gonna say. Yeah. They're just taking up the clock. Yeah, like if they didn't, if they weren't such a run heavy team, that they'd be giving up three fifty plus. Colts, I think, are two games in a row winning. Oh, well, I'm like two games in a row. What winning? Yeah, maybe. I think I they mean, have momentum going to this game. I yeah, mean, 49ers are off by, but if if Jimmy G is playing some for some reason, it still doesn't make any sense to me. 49ers just almost never lose when Jimmy G's on the field. It's wild. Um, he just finds ways to win games. I I think the the Colts lose this one. Both teams run the ball a stupid amount. Any idea who's going to be the running back this week for the 49ers? Not Sermon. Anybody? It's not Mitchell. Sermon. Wilson. Mitchell. Mitchell's back? Isn't Jeff Jeff Wilson's available to play, and so is Hasty? I don't oh, know if either one of them every are They're going to have four backs at the same time. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the health situation is with that, but they're both available to play after being on the pop. So... Very interesting, as long as it's just not Trey Sermon, which makes no sense. Yeah. Should be. Next up, Saints for Seahawks. You wrote James that breakout. James breakout game. Why is that? Seahawks secondary is absolute dog shit. It's one of the worst defenses I've ever seen. It's, it truly is. This defense is so bad. They're giving up the second most rushing yards, the fifth most passing yards per game. Averaging almost 28 points per game allowed. Now, they, they stink. On, they have a safety who doesn't play safety. Um, That's true. They stink. They're just there. not good. We have a lot of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say friends, but maybe Joe Green's friends that think their safety is amazing. So, I mean, I, I have a lot of friends who are Jet fans that thought the same thing. Not um, awful. He's just not a safety. If you want to call him a linebacker, fine. He's a great linebacker. He's not a safety. He had a, they the Seahawks never sh- sh- should have lost that game. They had that game in the bag. He had an easy Jamal Williams, uh, Jamal Adams for for those of you who don't know who the fuck we're talking about. Uh, literally had a pick six bounced off the, off of his face mask, hit him right in between the eyes. He's never had, he's never had an interception. He he put both hands up like this. And the ball hit him right in his face. I don't know if you knew that. He never had an interception. Ever. It doesn't surprise me. Um, in, the NF- in the NFL. I have they, no idea what... They lined him up at defensive end in that game. I'm not even kidding. And the one time he's not, he's in the perfect spot to make a beautiful pick six, and it bounces off his face. Can you imagine giving up a first-round pick and all that money to him? Two. Two first-round picks. Yeah, it's two first-round picks. I don't know. Listen, I don't think it's very good. Um, James is going to have a big game. I think Kamara is going to have a big game. Michael Thomas still not ready to play, by the way. He was available to come back this week. Still not ready to go. Uh, I don't That's think he's sad. ever going to play football again. That's just my opinion. He broke, the rec- he broke the record and said, fuck you, I'm done. Yeah, he got he got the contract mostly guaranteed. I think he's done. I think I think he's easily can be compared to Calvin Johnson and how he leaves. He's just going to leave like that. Same as him. Interesting. Very interesting. How did you feel about DK being too big for his pants out here? Talking all that trash to Shannon Sharp. Honestly, I have no idea why he's talking this shit. I mean, I didn't even watch this game, so I had no all right. idea. So if you didn't watch the game, there was like 30 seconds left, and DK has the, gets a catch on the sideline. Mm-hmm. You know, They need a field goal to win. Uh, was it to win or to tie? Joe, I don't remember. To tie the game. It was to tie the game. Instead of just real quick going out of bounds, yeah. it makes like three football moves, takes nine seconds off the clock, is tackled in bounds, and they have to they have to spike it was spiking to call a timeout. And, and then get... Shannon Sharp was like, Hey, that was a boneheaded move and then DK like tried to put him on. I blast. saw that, yeah. I saw that, yeah. yeah. But he didn't no, he didn't even get tackled in bounds. He fumbled while trying oh, to Oh yeah, that's right. He fumbled. Oh brutal. Tarble, hate it. Um, so is it a DK or is it a locket? Week? It's a locket. It's a locket game because DK is gonna be the doghouse. <laughs> DK's in the doghouse after that play. That's a boneheaded move. 
Um, DK, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets more than four targets. I mean, especially against this, this defense, very strong defense. You said Alex Collins looked strong. Yeah, I thought he, he looked, looked okay. Uh, guess what? Penny's coming back this week. Your favorite running back of all time. Guess who's got a waiver wire option on him? This guy. <laughs> I think he's actually going to play. Yeah, you know, no, split carry. I think he's going to split carries. That's that's what I really want to say. That's fine. That's I fine think he's going to split carries, especially that on a third down back because they don't have a third down back. I he's need four points. Gonna, he's instantly going to be the third down back. I'm telling you right now. I'd rather start him over David Johnson this week. So give me, give me for Sean Penny for four points. If you don't already know, I put him as the biggest sleeper two weeks before. You know, two weeks before you should pick up Penny, and this is it. All right. Yep. I didn't even when I wrote the article, I didn't even realize he was able to come back until like I pressed finish, and then I listened to your video. I was like, son of a bitch, good call, Mike. Thank I was very you, upset. Thank I was you, very you. upset that I didn't have him. Joe Green, go over our studs and duds. Where were we right? Where were we wrong? Tell us our record. Tell us everything else that we need to know about our lives because we're miserable human beings. So, Mike, you went two and three this past week. Uh, Brandon Cooks was a hit. Terrell Williams was a hit. Antonio Gibson you missed on. Then missed on A.J. Brown as a dud. Uh, Chris Carson did not play. And then you had Vikings running backs as sit. And Cook's, Cook had a really good week. And then uh, Billy, you had Najee Harris to stud. Obviously, he was involved. Um, Tyler Higby, not very good. Joe Burrow, uh, 22 fantasy points. He was pretty good. Josh Jacobs, you had as a sit. Uh, he had 15. You had all Giants by receivers. Answer. Sterling Shepard was uh, pretty damn good. And then uh, <laughs> Jacoby Myers was uh, terrible. So that was a good call. So I, I think we had, like I said, Mike, two and three. Billy at four and two. This is some bullshit. Uh oh. Comeback season, yeah, maybe. It's comeback. Oh, Billy's 16 and 18. Mike is 16 and 18. Oh, shit. We're, Eat a dick, We're tied. Eat a dick. Henry has to come strong for me. I can't. <laughs> this is absurd. Uh, my start to the week, my studs. Number one is going to be Jameis versus the Seahawks garbage secondary. I think that he can. Bound the ball right past anybody who's going to be uh, covering anybody and anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, next is a little bit of a gut play. I'm going on a, I don't know, a limb. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson versus the Jets. Jets, worst team in the NFL, fantasy wise, against a running back. This, I mean, if I Damian. talked you into this. What? This no, I wrote, like I wrote this last night. Oh. No, the Debo <laughs> one. Oh, the Debo one, yeah. I was going to say, if Damian Harris winds up playing and is healthy, that's not going to hit. I'll tell you right now. Um, Debo versus the Colts because Mike told me to, and I do. I, it's a good play. I, I don't hate it at all. <laughs> Mike, who are your studs? My studs. Ridley first against uh, the Dolphins. Everyone hurt in the secondary. I think they're banged up. They're already trash when they are playing. Um, I think Ridley... Uh, I think it was personal injury reasons why he didn't play. He didn't want to go to he didn't want to go to Paris. So um London. Paris? Sorry, <laughs> London. We went over this last time. London. Uh so he's gonna be my number one stud. Next up, Daryl Williams against the Titans. Titans are just bad at everything they do, so why not pick him? I think he's gonna have more catches than he does receiving yards than he does rushing yards. Just wanna say that. Um He's my second starter. Next up, I think it's, I think this is going to be the Aaron Jones week that you are going to want to sell him after this week. So that's my opinion. Aaron Jones is going to have a huge week against Washington. Sell him right after this. Um, that never works out well for us, the Aaron Jones thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Five uh, years my later. Fir- my first dud of the week is going to be Devontae Booker against the Panthers. They're all going to be running backs. Um Panthers, one of the best teams against the running back, one of the best teams against the rush. Seahawks, running backs, not sure who it's going to be yet. If Penny is going to play, whoever the starter is, I'm not going to give all of them. I'm going to stop doing that because it's just cost me losses around here. <laughs> <laughs> because Tony was should have been it, but like I didn't know if Shepard was going to play, so I was like, all right, I'll just put them all. Um, but whoever the starting running back is, if they split carries, I'll, I'll take them both. 
Um, going, I'm sorry, going against the Saints defense. They've always been good against running backs. It's never, it's not going to stop here. And Chicago running backs, you can put place all 20 of them, whoever, whoever you want. Anybody who touched the ball on the ground for a rush is not going to get very far against the Bucks, no matter what team you're on, unless your name is Derrick Henry. But uh, Mike seems to disagree with that. So <laughs> I'm going with a huge play, uh, Henry, against the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are a little smarter than all the rest of these teams. They're going to, you know, 10 in the box. 10 in the box. All right. Julio is also hurt. He, he hurt himself at the end of that. So there's not a lot to pass to. I mean, um, you just willingly starting the week off 0-1. I, don't really like I, I, I go in every week doing this. I don't know why. Maybe I'll learn my lesson. <laughs> I, want to hit a I want to hit a big one. I don't know why. I have every 49ers running back. I think they're all going to do horrible this week. They are going against the Colts. I think if the Colts do anything good, it is stopping the run. And then I'm going, like Billy did last week, all the Giants are our receivers. They're God. I mean, they just they they're losing right uh, right receivers left and right. I mean, Shepard's gonna come back, but everybody else is hurt. Tony's not. I don't, Tony's not gonna play. Um, so I just think there's nobody out there to throw to. So yeah, when I when I made that prediction last week, there was signs were pointing to Shepard not playing. So I was like, well, Tony's gonna punch Jalen Ramsey in the helmet, and then who's left? Dante Pettis. Like, come on, let's get the fuck out of my face with that. <sighs> Dante I'm Pettis just, almost ruined your day. <laughs> yeah, you kept saying that over and over again on Sunday. I was about to kill you. Uh, uh, Mr. Joe, hit us with these DM dumpsters. DM dumpster time. So uh, last week it was actually a pretty big hit. 400 views on YouTube. Let's keep it up, guys. Keep bringing the questions. So first off, we got Jalen Waddle or Mike Davis in the flex this week. Before we answer that question, for all 300 and... Uh, 297 people who don't subscribe, press the subscribe button. Fucking whores. Come on. It's free. It's free. <laughs> Just help us out. Do you have a Gmail out. account? Help, Come on. Help us out. If not, I'll give you a, I'll make you a Gmail account. Um, but back to the question, Jalen Waddle and Mike Davis. It's always going to be Jalen Waddle. It's never going to be Mike Davis. <laughs> and if you still own Mike Davis, he's prob- you probably have bigger problems whether, whether you should play him in your flex or not. That's not true. You would love to have Mike Davis right now. Well, I mean, I'd love the four points, yes. I, I guess you could say that. <laughs> um, I have two starting running backs. One's on by and one's probably not going to play. That's yep. all I've got. Next one, Joe. Uh, would you start Tua Tonga by Loa or Sam Darnold this week? That's a little bit of a tougher one, I guess, because they're both good matchups. Um if it's the same person who's got Waddle, you might as well stack him. <laughs> but it's obviously not. Um, I'm going Darnold. I think Darnold's just better, more relevant fantasy. And the Giants are just dog shit. Sorry, Mike. Not to be not to be mean to your team, but I'm going to a the Falcons are just one of the worst defenses of all time. So I think Giants are a little bit better. I think Tua had a he coming off of a injury. I think he looked awesome. Um, I don't know if it's the extra game plan he got to you know, study in the in the room or not, but Tua looked great with Waddle and uh, Jazeki. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Tua. Third one here, Javante Williams or Miles Gaskins this week. We got three Dolphins in a row. Ah, uh, jeez. I mean, they're both. I'm not excited to play either one, but if I had to pick one, I'm going with Javante for the upside. I can't. I'm, I can't. I can't do the Gaskins thing again. He, I think he's going to wind up having a bigger day, I think, but I feel safer playing Javante and get the get the 10 points he gets every week. Yeah, if you have to play either one, I'm going to go with Miles Gaskins. At least I have that you know chance that it maybe it's a big day, but I yeah. doubt it. He could get all the targets. He could. He's, could. Could. It's a big could. Yeah. It's a big could. Or he could Whereas, have six carries. Like if you need the upside, I guess Gaskin could be the could be a good play, but I feel much safer having Williams in my lineup. I'll tell you that. From a guy who has zero running backs, I'd rather take Williams. That's Fourth not- one here. Well, um, this person lost two of their starting running backs. They're on IR, so they want to know: Is there any deep sleeper running backs they could scoop up this week to start? 
fun motherfucker. Ah. What happened, Mike? Funny um, bone. Deep sleep? Just how deep you trying to get? <laughs> Penny was, is the deepest you could get. Yeah, I mean, it's Penny, Pen- Ramondre Stevenson. Um, players who's like your, that. Who's your Evans? What's his first name? Chris, Chris, Evans. Chris Evans. Chris Evans? No, I don't think it's to be Chris Evans. It's, it was a lucky bullshit touchdown. I know, I know, I know. Joe's good friends with him. Sorry, Chris Evans. I know you watch the show. Big fan. <laughs> Come on, whenever you want. But uh, um, I it's tough. It's it's broke out there. I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, for and maybe in some leagues. I mean, because we're in a keeper league, we have a lot more players. Um, I would say Ingram is probably the safest. You yeah, know, pick I'm, up. I'm checking our waiver wide now. Like, obviously, you're gonna want. Dearness Johnson, if you can get him, um, it's tight. It's tough out there. It's it's real tough out there right now for um, for running back. You can go Freeman on on the Ravens if you're really feeling frisky, but it's tight. It's a real tight window. Uh, it's not fun. Yeah. What about Sh- 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 Abed, Abed, whatever his name is. Sh- 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 I mean, that, Maybe. that depends on what you how you feel about Gaskin. You know, I I think Gaskin's still. I mean, you still have Malcolm Brown there, the ultimate cuck. You know, it's everybody's getting touches over there. I, I don't right. like the Dolphins. Anybody it's the open Dolphins, house over there? Touch. They're all touching each other. <laughs> it's twice now, Mike. Ew. Number five. Number five. How do you feel about Damian Williams this week? Is he going to be back from COVID? Because he's tested positive for COVID. So I don't think he's going to be back. I don't know. I, I have no idea. There's no it's, status update. If he oh. even if he is comes back, it's the, one of the worst matchups you could possibly have. Yeah. So if you have so, a better option, you he, just... He might him. score more points being on COVID than if he was playing. <laughs> Yikes. You better hope he has <laughs> catches. That's all you got to hope for. Yeah. Last one here. Who wins this trade, Amari Cooper for A.J. Brown? A.J. Brown. Amari Cooper stinks. I said Cooper was garbage all year round. So I mean, that's not, me and you both, man. I, I think I they're both think. garbage, so trade them both. No, I, I think the A.J. Brown has the upside with the Mr. Yak. Um, Amari is too hit or miss for me, and he's always banged up. Give me A.J., especially since the Julio injury was a... Hamstring, right? Yes, hamstring. Yeah. No, give me AJ Brown. He's the only guy who's going to catch the ball around there nowadays. He is the Anything number else? one option. That is it. That does it for the DM dumpster. It's a beautiful thing. Mike, you have anything Yeehaw! else to say? No. Okay. Nothing. Uh, I have nothing. Like. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Subscribe. It means a lot. We like to see the, that small number get bigger. It makes us feel better. It makes us work hard. Uh, giving the best content we can for you guys. Check out the website. Lots of articles. Check out the YouTube. Lots of stuff. Check out the Instagram. Growing. Um, check out Ben Diagonal. Back to back to back to back. Winning weeks in the NFL now. We're on fire. Nothing else. All sports coming back. It's going to be fun. Like, follow, subscribe, and we'll see you fuckers next week. See ya!